If you're growing passion fruit at home or you want to buy one in the future then this video is going to be extremely important because today we're going to talk about a fatal mistake that so many home gardeners are making when it comes to choosing a passion fruit to grow that have bad repercussions for many years to come and I don't want that to happen to you. Today we're talking about how grafted passion fruits can become an invasive pest and take years and years to get rid of, produce little to no fruit and they're not very good so if you have planted a passion fruit and thought what is this fruit that I've grown this is not what I bought then this could be the reason why and if you haven't then this is really important thing to consider I've seen this pop up on Facebook groups or gardening groups for so many years and there must be hundreds if not thousands of people that have been left with this disaster of a problem so today we're going to talk about how to identify whether you have this problem, what to do to avoid it, um, some tips on growing the best passion fruit and some common questions that get asked around growing passion fruit and issues with having flowers but not fruit. So it's all happening in today's video. So what is a grafted passion fruit? It's basically two different varieties on one plant. So the rootstock is usually a really vigorous growing plant that may not necessarily have nice fruit and then they get a fruit that has delicious tasting fruit and merge that onto the same plant so you end up with a hybrid which has vigorous growing roots and delicious fruit and often those rootstocks are a lot hardier and disease resistant so you have more success more chances of success with it growing but the problem is that the rootstock is so vigorous growing that it can often overtake the plant, kill off your delicious tasting fruit and you end up with just a rootstock plant and that rootstock plant either produces no fruit or very little not very nice fruit so it's not ideal it's not what you want in the garden and as well the roots can be really invasive and send runners throughout the garden the suckers that grow from the rootstock can be found meters 10 meters 20 meters away from the original plant so they can be really hard to get control of and any tiny little piece of root left in the ground is going to regrow so even if you try to remove it you're going to have um, rootstock popping up for years and years to come. After my last video on edible climbers I got a lot of questions about why I don't plant grafted passion fruit so this is why because uh, the risk versus reward is not worth it for me. The trouble that you can run into with grafted passion fruits is so hard to get rid of that it's not worth it for me to run the risk of planting grafted passion fruit and I honestly don't even think it should be allowed to be sold especially because so many people or most people don't even know that they are meant to be taking the shoots off the rootstock in the first place. One of the most commonly sold passion fruits here in Australia is a grafted variety and unlike most grafted fruit trees having grafted passion fruit is not always the best idea and especially here in Perth um, we have a great climate to be growing passion fruit and we don't need to have the grafted rootstock as much. Grafted passion fruit are better in some climates especially in tropical climates where they can be susceptible to a lot more diseases fungal diseases um, root rot and frosts but here in Perth we have really sandy soils that um, allow these vigorous growing rootstocks to become really invasive. So I'm going to share some tips on what to do if you do have rootstock overtaking your plant or how to manage it but first we need to figure out if we have rootstock and whether that is overtaking our plant. So there are three main ways to find out and one of them is if you notice that you're not getting any fruit on your plant um, or it's taking a really long time to fruit then that's probably a good reason to start looking deeper into the problem and that's where you might find that you have these strange fruit which wasn't what you thought you purchased so they rootstock fruit are often little yellow or orange and when you cut them open inside they have red flesh inside and they do not taste good so that's a re another really good sign to see that you have rootstock on your passion fruit or your passion fruit may have been taken over by a rootstock um, variety the other way and this is the best way to tell because you can tell whether there's fruit or no fruit is to look at the leaves so a normal passion fruit will have a three-pronged leaf and a rootstock variety will have a five-pronged 
prong leaf. So that's a really easy way to tell. You can go and look at your plant and see if you have sections which are branching off with five prong leaves, or if the whole plant has five prong leaves, then you know that you, your whole passion fruit has been overtaken. So if you do just have some small shoots off the side and they have the five prong leaves, then you can just remove those and you're going to have to continuously remove those and keep on top of it. Um, and if your whole plant is rootstock then you're going to probably have to get rid of it because it isn't going to be producing what you want it to produce and it's just going to get harder and harder to remove. Getting rid of it is another thing so most people that have tried to get rid of the invasive rootstock will generally have it popping up for years often 10 years to come and really big distances from where they first planted it so it is a really hard one to get rid of and you need to try and make sure you get as much of that root out of the ground as possible. People that sell passion fruits will often say it's easy you can get a grafted variety it's going to grow really vigorously and be really healthy and it's easy to maintain by just pulling off those rootstocks from the bottom if they start to shoot but in reality it depends on how you you garden what your style of gardening is and for me I like a low maintenance garden that can go a little bit wild and with the nature of a passion fruit it's really lush and vigorous growing it can be really hard to keep on top or see those rootstocks popping up and um, some of them may get away from you so it just depends on how you like to garden but also the fact that the roots will pop up underground to me is just a hard no it's not something that I will ever plant in my garden so what can you do if you do want to grow a grafted variety is you can grow it in a pot so passion fruit can grow in pots and containers but they are heavy feeders so you're going to need to put a lot of compost and good soil into that pot and a decent sized pot not a small one so that it has access to more nutrients and then you're going to want to feed it every six to eight weeks to give it a regular boost of energy because it's going to have a limited supply in that pot but that can be a great way to control the uh, grafted rootstock and keep it all contained and not spread throughout your garden. Okay, so that's on the grafted passion fruit and the invasive rootstock. How, what are some other tips for growing delicious passion fruit and um, what are some common issues that we run into? So one of the first things that is important as we discussed before is that passion fruit are heavy feeders they are the pigs of the garden they like a good meal so you need to provide them with some nutrient rich soil lots of compost um, but they also don't like wet feet so giving them some free draining soil by adding in some um, more sandy soil is going to make sure that it doesn't get clogged up and if you do get a lot of rainfall in your area they also don't like wet feet so um, Planting them on a bit of a mound so the water can run off is a great way to stop them from getting waterlogged or too wet, especially in more tropical regions. Passion fruits do like a lot of sun, so you're going to want to give six to eight hours of sun. Um, so a really sunny, sheltered location. And because they are evergreen, they have leaves all year round, they can provide a lot of valuable shade for other parts of your garden. Um, and you can use that to your advantage. All right, so a common question that get, I get asked is, what do I do if my passion fruit is sending off flowers but they're not actually setting into fruit? So do I need to have multiple plants or is it self-pollinating? The answer is most varieties will be self-pollinating, um, but you still need bees to really help that process along. So uh, planting flowers around your passion fruit vine, I like to have um, flowers in between a lot of my fruit trees to increase that pollination and attract a lot more pollinators to my garden. So I've got lavender in between my feijoas because they fruit because it flowers at the same time um, and so that's another great tip to plant flowers uh, that are going to be blooming at the same time as your passion fruit and that's going to attract lots of pollinators to then give you lots more fruit. Another thing is if you are having issues you can hand pollinate using a tiny paintbrush and getting some of that pollen off the male um, part onto the female so that's another way that you can sort of boost the uh, likelihood of you getting pollinated flowers and more fruit. Another thing is to hold off on fertilizing the plant when it's flowering. And that goes for like a lot of our fruit trees. It's best to stop feeding or stop um, fertilizing any of our fruit trees when they are flowering because that can cause the flowers to drop off. So what about dry fruit with not any juicy delicious pulp inside? This can be from a lack of water. So make sure that your passion fruit is getting plenty of water, especially in a hot dry summer. Um, and another thing to consider is they like consistent water. 
I mean, <laughs> they are easy to grow and I feel like they're low maintenance, but you need to get a few things right. So consistent watering is going to help um, reduce the chances of the fruit dropping off prematurely. So if you are finding that your fruit is just falling off before it's ready, that can be due to an inconsistent watering. How long does it take to start producing fruit? So passion fruits tend to start producing flowers and fruit after one year of growing. So um, you just need to be patient for that first year, but if you are running into troubles, it's taking longer than that, then that's when you, I would be definitely looking into um, the amount of sun that I'm getting, my passion fruit's getting, the amount of food that it has access to and whether or not it's actually a rootstock has overtaken it. So it's a great one to keep an eye on, especially at that one year mark when you would expect to see flowers and fruit. Um, another one is, is can you grow it from seed? So yes, you can grow passion fruit from seed. They're really easy to grow from seed and they grow best from seed, really fresh seeds. So if you've just got a passion fruit that's, um, you want them to be quite ripe, overripe, so the seeds are mature and you can wash off some of that flesh and then plant the seeds pretty much straight away, somewhere nice and warm and they should be popping up within two weeks. The passion fruit seeds don't last as well if you keep them, dry them and keep them. They're better to be used fresh. So this is something that you may not know and that is passion fruit vines or plants, berries in fact, um, only last for about seven years before they will have end of life. So you want to be replenishing your passion fruit vine every four to five years is a good time. That's when the production really starts to slow down and because it takes a year for your fruit, your plant to start fruiting, if you already have another one on the go before that six or seven year mark, you'll have a good crossover and you'll get continuous fruit. Passion fruit are really good to plant at around springtime because that gives them um, the whole of spring, all of summer to get established before they have to survive winter and gives them that time to get up and going before they can start regrowing and start coming to life in spring after a year and you can get that delicious fruit and let me know below if you have experienced this if you've um, had a rootstock overtake your passion fruit there are so many um, horror stories out there and uh, I hope, hope that this video is going to help reduce some of that